Choosing the right heat exchanger for your specific service is a critical decision that can significantly impact the efficiency and cost-effectiveness, operation, and maintenance of your shell and tube heat exchanger. That's why selecting the optimum exchanger Tema type is crucial to ensure optimal performance and easy maintenance. In this video, we will explore the various Tema types and how to determine the most suitable one based on your service requirements. Whether you are dealing with fouling fluids, high pressure conditions, or specialized boiling and condensing services, understanding the Tema types will help you make informed decisions for your exchanger needs. If you'd like to know more about other parameters affecting the thermal design of a heat exchanger heck this article in the description. There are various designs of heat exchangers front head, rear head, shell. These designs are commonly called Tema types. They can be shown in the photo. A process engineer should understand when it's a priority to ensure easy maintainability and balance it with the exchanger's fixed cost. In our P&ID course, we talked about isolation and maintainability. So let's start talking about front head types. Channel and removable cover, type A, this design typically consists of a shell with separate channel covers that can be removed. Type A heat exchangers are more straightforward to disassemble, allowing easy access to the tube, bundle for cleaning or repair purposes. They are suitable for applications with fluids that may cause fouling or scaling, requiring periodic cleaning, but they are more expensive than Type B. Bonnet Integral Cover, Type B, this design incorporates a single piece bonnet or cover that is an integral part of the shell structure. That's why it is in applications where frequent disassembly is not required, and maintenance is less critical as it shall result in a more compact and less expensive design. So let's start talking about shell types. One pass shell, type E, this is the common shell design for the vast majority of exchanges, where the inlet flow goes through the shell side in one direction and then the fluid exits from the other side of the shell. Kettle, Type K, this is commonly used in services with high boiling rate, where the fluid to be vaporized enters from the shell bottom and heated through the tube bundle. The resulted vapor then goes from the kettle top, and any non-vaporized liquid exits from the other side of the shell. Their most famous application is the kettle reboiler. Divided flow, Type J, this is another type of a shell where either the inlet flow is divided while the outlet flow exits in one nozzle in case of condensation applications that require a very low pressure drop. In this case, the shell type shall be J21. On the other hand, if the outlet flow is divided, which is commonly the case for thermosiphon reboilers, the shell type shall be J12. So let's start talking about rear head types. Fixed tube sheet, type cell, M, N, these designs feature tubes fixed to tube sheets welded to the shell. It's a cost-effective option, but cleaning the outside of the tubes can be challenging as the bundle can't be removed. U-tube, type U, this design has a single tube sheet and bent tubes allowing the bundle to expand or contract to handle stress differentials. However, the tube's interior can be difficult to clean due to the U-bend. Floating head, type S, T, this design is the most flexible and expensive. It allows free expansion of the tube bundle, and both the inside and outside of the tubes can be cleaned. SDHEs can also be classified based on the nature of the service they provide. The most important factors affecting the choice of the Tema type are Fouling resistance of shell side Fouling resistance of tube side Design pressure and temperature Boiling and condensing services So if we the shell side is serving a high fouling fluid, this means that we shall need to clean the shell. In this case, the bundle should be removable. So we should choose type A for front head and type S or T or U types for the rear head. So for a normal shell, the exchanger type shall be AES or AET, 
or AEU. If the fluid in the shell side is clean, then in this case we don't need to remove the tube, bundle to clean the tube from outside, which shall result in an exchanger with less dimensions and lower cost. So we can use B type for front head, and L or M or N or U types for the rear head. So the Tama type of the exchanger can be BEM or BEN or BEL or BEU. If the fluid in the tube side is a clean fluid, a famous example is steam, we can choose a U type for the rear head. It's much cheaper, and there is no need to be cleaned. So depending on the fouling resistance of the shell side, the Tema type can be AEU or BEU. If the fluid in the tube side needs to be cleaned, this can be done without removing the tube bundle. So even with type B, we can clean the tube side with the exchanger in place, but we shall remove the whole integral bonnet instead of just removing the channel cover in type A. Here we can choose a Tema type of BEL or BEM. If the exchanger is expected to be subject to a very high pressure, above 50 or 60 bar, for a removable bundle an internal leakage can occur as tube sheets are not fixed. That's why in this case a fixed tube sheet shall be needed in this case. If the exchanger is serving a fouling fluid, chemical cleaning shall be considered in this case. If the exchanger is subject to a high temperature, a floating head would absorb thermal expansion. If a fixed tube sheet is considered, the exchanger should be equipped with an expansion joint to handle the thermal expansion. This is an important issue that should be taken in consideration. When dealing with a fixed tube sheet heat exchanger, where there's a large temperature difference between the shell and the tube materials, this can cause huge stresses on the tube. This is because tubes shall be prone to thermal expansion while the tube sheets are fixed. Here calculating allowable stress is essential to ensure the exchanger can operate safely within its thermal limits. While less common for fixed tube sheet designs, some solutions include installing expansion joints on the shell or using rod baffles for tube support. If there is still an issue with the stresses on the tube, engineers may find it necessary to consider floating head exchangers to give room for tube thermal expansion. For exchangers that exhibit a boiling or condensation effect, we can use any shell type. However, if these exchangers require a very small pressure drop, we can then use a kettle type, K, such as the case for a kettle reboiler. So if we are dealing with a fouling fluid in the shell and a clean fluid in the tube, as it is the case for steam reboilers, we can use a KU type. If the heating medium in the tube is fouling, a KT type can be used. If the fluid in the shell is clean, then we can use BKM type. If this is accompanied with a clean fouling in the tube, then the Tema type shall be BKU. We can also use the divided flow shell type, in other words J type, if we want the minimum pressure drop. Distributing the inlet flow for condensers, or the outlet flow for reboilers can reduce the pressure drop significantly. That's why it's common to use a shell with J21 type for condensers, and J12 type for thermosiphon reboilers, and use the front head and rear head type depending on our cleaning requirements. Selecting the optimum exchanger Tema type is an essential aspect of ensuring efficient heat transfer in your industrial processes. By considering factors like fouling resistance, design pressure and temperature, and the nature of your service. A thorough understanding of Tema types will empower you to optimize your processes, reduce costs, and boost overall productivity.